that before we start the api gateway let me explain what is the problem we do have if i don't have the api gateway so suppose you have one uh, web application and this is the microservice and you have exposed many rest api right and here is the ui or the mobile phone so if ui want to show some data or they want to do operation or yes they will call this api right so to calling this microservice they need the ip address with the ip address they need the port and and then they need the this uh, request mapping right the access home or the catalog or the add item right so uh, uh, it's okay if you have this one it's okay but a little bit problem is there you don't have the security here right because this is running on your premises and that you are ui is running on the other premises and you have open your port uh, for the uh, for calling from the ui or the mobile phone security is not there but okay we'll be able to manage but the bigger problem is that when you will have the many more microservices right so earlier you only calling the two microservices now you are now if you have to call the many microservices right so you know for each call you have to hard code many ip address port number and to access this microservices right and now it would not be easy to maintain in the ui every time if anything change in the backend side then again you have to come and change in the ui code right because both are the very tight coupled and you have to open the port or this ip address of the each microservice as open so what is the problem here first problem many hard code url in your ui code or the mobile code right no security means all this microservices is open and the uh, security thread is very much high here right and you cannot use the authentication authorization in very nice way because everything is open here and if you change anything in the backend uh, if you suppose any change in the rest mapping api then accordingly you have to update the ui code as well as right very tight coupling right and the load balancing issue is also there so suppose if you want to make the two instance of any microservices one or two then you have to take care for that right and again the rerouting issue so suppose today you want to route one ip address for the different one uh, rest api to the different rest api you cannot do that because this is the hard uh, hard coupling kind of things here so now thing is that what is the solution and the solution is the api gateway so how it is going to solve if you see the previous uh, screen how many calls you are doing from the ui for the each microservices is the each call not even the each one means if one microservices if you have the 10 rest api so 10 call for the one microservices so you think if you have the 10 microservices and the 10 rest api for the each microservices hundreds calls they have to uh, happening from the ui and those much of the hard code you have to do that now once you get the api you have to make just one call you be always calling the api gateway without knowing where this microservices are residing and you can make all these microservices in kind of the private subnet or the private network so you can save from any security threat because this is under the under the one private network and only api gateway can able to access those things because earlier if you see there could be the many ui they they, they were calling to microservices but in this case on the api gateway would be calling the microservices so you can keep in the safe place in the private network kind of things to uh, avoid any kind of the security this is the one benefit and from the ui side no need to do any hard code for the so many microservices he this ui has to just hit to the api gateway for any request for the any microservices that i will show you how you can do that
So what is the benefit you are achieving here with this API gateway? You can make the security means in the API gateway, you can check which from which IP address call is coming and you can make the backlist to IP address, white listing IP address, those things you can do that. You can do the authentication means this request has the authentication to access any microservices or not. Even though have the authentication, are they authorized to hit the particular REST API or not? And if you want to do any routing for the API, that you can do that through the API gateway. That's why API gateway is very much important here, right? And uh, before we starting that, I have one question for you. So suppose if you have the one API gateway, and you have many services A, B, C, D, E. And if through the browser or the mobile phone, through the API, if you want to call the service B, and that time, suppose service B is not up, it is not running, or network is slow, what happened? It will throw the exception. And that exception will go to the, to the user, to your browser and it would not be good right you have to somehow to catch the exception catch these errors before hitting to the your uh, calling browser or the calling mobiles right take another example suppose through the browser or from any ui or mobile phone and uh, you are browsing some e-commerce website suppose the Flipkart, amazon or anyone and then uh, you first compute the order system of and this, each one is the microservices here once you finish the orders order system then it will delegate the execution to the payment microservice but this payment microservice was the some internal errors what happened that it will throw the exception right and whatever you have select the item, put in the card, and order system is already finished. After all those things, if payment is got disturbed, everything got disturbed, right? It will not call this errors, it will, it will also disturb this microservices, it will also this microservices. So, and of course, you don't want to have this kind of experience by your user, right? So what you will do that time? So obviously, you will need something who can stop this cascading errors to the the incoming microservices right so how you will catch and take the and if suppose some problem are there you can delegate to some other instance of the payment or you can give the information to the user hey uh, i have complete your order but you have to make the payment as the payment service was slow some kind of things this message you can give to user for the better ui experience and the solution is the hashtrix. Hashtrix is called the circuit breaker pattern. Means, as I explained here, that if ever we be here, it will be also cascading here. So, Haskell is saying no. If ever we is here, we will not make it cascading. We just stop it here. And we will, through the fallback, we will take some, uh, some precautions or take some uh, preventive measure. It should not impact to the other microservices. And that's why this design pattern is called the service circuit breaker pattern. And how we can achieve? We will achieve through the hash tricks. This is a library that controls the interaction between the microservices to provide the latency and the fault tolerance. That will be seen in the code. But if you see the distributed environment, whether you have the uh, multiple microservices, so obvious you should have a very good mechanism by which you can do the fault tolerance, right? So, and this is the example that uh, as I explained that that service could be have the internal error, it could be the slow service due to some other dependencies, due to some third party dependencies, or due to some slow network, one of the microservices could not work as per your expectations. So what you will do that, right? So what I will do, uh, I will use the hash tricks for the spring network, and uh, this is the uh, the GitHub site for the hashtags. You can go and read about more about hashtags. And uh, so, assume that you have the multiple microservices and you have the many client. Suppose client one want to connect the order management. So what they will do? They will put the hard code here, right? 
this is the IP address and this is the port number, they will put the hard code, right? Again, client 2 won't connect with the order management, they will also put the hard code. So similar kind of, we could have many clients, we could have the many, uh, the servers, right? The problem is here, the hard code you are, right? You have to mention the hard code of the server inside your client. And suppose, if you will restart the machine due to some cause and due to some the dynamic port, HTTP port, again all the IP address or port number would be changed. Again you have to come and in all the client you have to change the, the IP address or the port number. And it is not feasible solution, right? You could have the n number of client, n number of the servers and it is not possible every day you go and update the IP address, right? And suppose also if the client one uh, is connecting to order management and order management is getting the request from thousands of clients. So obvious you have to scale out, you have to make new instance for the order management. Then now you have the uh, five or six IP address for the order management. How you do in the how you be connect with the client one? So we cannot do the load balancing also, right? So and also if you want to track track how many instances we do have for the order management for the payment gateway, you can't you we can't do that, right? So that's why these are the problem statement and I'm talking one more problem statement. So suppose this is your client and this is your server, right? So if you are getting the request for the server one and the request is going to day by day increase, how, how you can solve this problem? Because client knows the IP address for the server one. Tomorrow if you want to up and running another server one, then that server would have the different IP address. Then again the client would not able to connect you with the new instances. So these kind of problems are there and we are going to solve both problems with the help of the service discovery. So first uh, I will introduce the load balancer that is the solution of these problems. So what happened in the load balancer that client will not directly communicate to the server. They will communicate to the load balancer and load balancer will have the information of all the server. So we can keep the server one of the two instances, server two of the two instances, and the load balancer will check the health, health checkup of the each server. And if your server is up and running, then they will forward the client call to that server. And also we can keep track of all the instances with the help of the auto scale, right? If any server is down, that auto scale can automatically create the new instances for the particular server. So we can solve those problems through the load balancer. But again, we have not discussed the solution for this problem, right? So the, the solution for that is the server discovery means here is the client, here is the server. They will not connect from server client to the server. They will connect through the discovery server. Okay, so what happened that discovery server? All the servers, they registered with the discovery server and client is not knowing where is this server allocated, what is the IP address, what is the port number. They, they don't know. If the client one want to communicate with the server one, they will hit the discovery server and all the server would have one name, just one string name, production server or the order server, something. They will just give the name to discovery server and discovery server will either return the IP address of that particular server to whom client one is looking or they can forward their request to direct to the client to the server. So if you see we have the root coupling kind of things and client and server is not connected to each other without knowing the IP address and port number client one would be the connect to the server and this is called the server discovery. So if you see if you see the same problem what I was showing the in the first slide you have the multiple servers and you have the multiple clients. So you have to register all the server with the Eureka server, see? And you can have the multiple instances also with the different IP address and the port number. You can see the order management to have the two instances. It could be possible. 
with the server first we have the two instances that could be possible and here the client they will hit the ueka server and say i want to connect the server first he will return the server first ip address and port number and then you can see here they can connect to the server first so with this solution i would able to solve all the problems that we have noted down in the first